this is my new BMW M140i. A six cylinder turbocharged uh, engine which produces about 340 brake horsepower. You might expect to see a video in the coming weeks I've crashed my M140i. Uh, hopefully not, but yeah, um, <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another NFOX TV video. Today I want to give you my six month review on the M140i. Now I'm pleased to report I haven't crashed it yet. Um, I'm sure that's still to come so yeah keep an eye out for that video. Um, but yeah I've had it for six months now, I've done 4,000 miles and yeah I just kind of wanted to give you my uh, analysis as to what it's been like to live with. So let's go for a drive and yeah talk about it in a little more depth. That has changed in the last six months is my views on the styling of this car because you know I've, I've never found the one series to be particularly you know good looking um, you know I never bought the car for that it was more about its ability and the fact that I couldn't really afford the M2 now lots of people said should have gone for the 2 series but the thing with doing that, like it, when I look at the 2 Series, it reminds me too much of the M2, so I know every time I'd looked at it, you know, I'd be thinking, yep, yeah, that's not an M2, whereas the 1 Series is just a completely different platform altogether. And yeah, I've just been so, you know, over the moon with you know, everything this car is able to do. Now, it has helped that I've done a few modifications to the, uh, well, at least the cosmetics of the car. Uh, the splitter kit, for example, that has just made a world of difference, in my opinion. Uh, it just looks so much more aggressive, and it just has such, you know, just a lot more presence on the road, I think, now with, with that kit, you know, all the way around. Um, and yeah, the only other thing, really, has been the, the M mirrors and, uh, yeah, wrapping the crash bars, which I've done uh, recently. But yeah, I think, all in all, it sort of comes together, and it's just a, a much more attractive car as a result. So one thing that was really important to me with this car is its practicality and yeah you know i know it's it's a hot hatch and we shouldn't really be worrying about what the mpg is and things like that but this is my daily car i have to use this for work and everything else this you know it isn't just the the toy uh, as it were and you know i've been blown away i mean i'm returning on average 30 to 35 miles a gallon you know tank to tank which is similar consumption to what we get from our little fiat 500. I should note, when my missus sees me refer to about 595 as Fiat 500, I probably, uh, yeah, never get my dinner cooked for me again. Anyway, I digress. It's comfortable. It's just, you know, I've been able to get four people in this car. I don't really like travelling with that many passengers anyway, but, you know, it can do it. It's, you know, we drove over to Nürburgring earlier this year, and... It was just a comfortable cruiser all the way over there, I'd get on the ring and all of a sudden it opens up and becomes a, a bit of an animal. When you do start pressing on, you know, the car does show some of its limitations. Um, for me, going around the Nürburgring, one thing that I felt it lacked slightly was a bit of bite on the brakes. Now, the car stopped absolutely fine, the brakes remained cool enough, you know, I wasn't experiencing any fade to doing a single lap at a time, you know, so that, that wasn't too bad, but I just, I feel like that initial bite, um, it's just somewhat lacking, and you know, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about with BMWs, not just this one, but BMWs in general, and just that, you know, you do need to press the brake a bit harder, but I guess it's a case of learning to drive like that or you know what I'm going to do is actually look for uh, well look to update the upgrade the brake pads uh, probably going to do the brake lines and brake fluid as well and I'm just hoping that just gives me a little bit more um, just so it just inspires a bit more confidence you know when you've got that that sharper brake. So 
there's a similar story with the suspension as well. Now, when you're having just a nice little B-row blast like I am today, you know, it, it feels absolutely fine. But when you're really pushing on, um, you know, around the track, it, it does get a bit wallowy on the front. And I thought initially it was just because I wasn't used to rear wheel drive um, so much, you know, coming from front wheel drive and four wheel drive platforms. But yeah, I do feel like there, there's something missing there. Now, a few people, they go for the braces that you can get on the M135 and it's supposed to stiffen it up a little bit and that's supposed to make a bit of an improvement. So I might look into having that done because it's quite an affordable mod um, and then yeah, potentially do something with the suspension. And you know, you've got, uh, you know, lots of people rave about the Motec stance, so that's an option, um, but I'm also considering potentially changing the shocks as well. But you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I think brakes first, see, see where I'm at. And yeah, if there's still some, some room for improvement there, we'll, we'll start spending a bit more money. So in terms of reliability, uh, touch wood, not really had any issues at all. There was the initial exhaust rattle, which everyone knew about. Um, the only other thing that I've really experienced is uh, the coolant uh, seems to be disappearing. <laughs> um, this is the model where they put the stone guards on the radiator. So um, yeah, pretty confident it's not an actual puncture in the radiator, but it seems to be quite a common issue where they seem to be using uh, quite a bit of coolant. Now, reading online, it you know a few people have mentioned it might actually be the cap uh, in the coolant chamber that's allowing the, the fluids to evaporate. So yeah, I've topped it up recently. Uh, I think it was about 300 milliliters used in the first 3,000 miles. Uh, we'll kind of, yeah, I'll keep, keep an eye on it. And if it's still a problem, take it into BMW and see what they've got to suggest. One of the things that I do not regret doing at all, um, and yeah, if anyone's like me out there um, and debating whether to go for an exhaust system, just do it. Uh, the Remus exhaust, it just completely brings this car alive. One of the things I really lacked from the S3 was just the noise. Uh, you know, I wanted something borderline as bone obnoxious, and I've got exactly that. It was nice about the Rima system because it still uses the, the flap on the back. When you pop it into comfort, you don't get any annoying drone on the motorway and bits like that. So you can still use it. And then when you're having a bit of a run like you are now, yeah, it makes all of the noise and drama that, that you've got. I love this car. It is doing everything that I need it to do um, right now. And it's just, it ticks all of the boxes for me. Yes, I'd like a BMW M2 competition or a Porsche Cayman, but you know, I'm just not, I'm not quite there yet. You know, I can't really afford either of those. So for where I am right now, I don't think there's gonna be any other car that's gonna do as much as this does um, in the same price bracket. So, you know, in terms of plans, yes, might get the brakes or suspension done. I can still enjoy the car without that, but really it's just to drive the car and enjoy it. say thank you all for watching please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already uh, if there's any videos you'd like me to do as well please let me know in the comments below be interested you know in what what isn't out there because I know I appreciate there's so much content on the, the M140 out at the moment and seeing as I'm not changing the car anytime soon it'd be good to get some ideas as to what you'd like to see but otherwise 
Hope you've had a fantastic Christmas, New Year, and uh, yeah, stay tuned. We've got lots of content to come.